Hi everyone, Dr. Victoria Scorbo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Um, today is the 6th of January, and uh, I thought I would just hop on and do a, a quick video. Um, we're having a, a, a big problem in the U.S. There was a siege on the Capitol while both the uh, House and Senate were in session. It was going to be the certification, I guess, that Congress has to do for the election. It was the last step. There was really no way that they could disrupt. Um, they could they could prolong it, but they um, there was really nothing that they could do to overturn the will of the people. It wasn't going to happen. Um, so I guess they did the next best thing. They decided to... Uh, sick their um, their I have to be really careful about the words I use because I think the information is important um, that comes through and I don't want my um, language to to stop the the messages that have to come through um, We'll call them supporters. Um, where was the National Guard? Where was the um, where was the police? I mean, the Capitol Police is just, you know, what about the, I don't know, there must be another police force. It's the Senate, it's 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 the Senate, right? <laughs> and the Congress. And um, so there was, there was not a lot of, um, they didn't, they let him in, if, if, what it seems like. They just, you know, I mean, I'm sure they had to push something to get in, but they pretty much let him in. And um, there's, there's say that they're, that they're also attacking other state houses in other states. Uh, at the same time. So it's definitely a concerted effort. It's definitely something that uh, was planned. Um, and um, it, it was just another show, just another carnival show. And I say that, and I don't mean to belittle what happened or um, you know, I realize the seriousness of what happened, but this is like, if you look at it from the perspective of Trump, who's like this man child super id that he has never found a boundary to stop him. Um, This was his, like, he was the puppet master. He met, you know, whether he did it by himself or, you know, it was a confluence of people uh, with little or no moral compass, but the, but the, the seeking for power and money. It's epic in its way, um, or typical. The fool, right? Trump, the fool. Uranus, the fool card in the tarot associated with Uranus. The sun conjunct Uranus, conjunct the point of his destiny, the North Node. This is an initiation for us. This is perhaps the end of the old but perhaps it's time for something new to enhance the old. The, the basic structure is there, but how can we make it more, I don't know, prettier or softer or, uh, I don't know. So I wanted to come on and pull some cards or just free form. What do, what do they call that when they do those wrap things? 
um, free form. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my God, I'm killing myself. I'm, I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what I'm talking I know there's rap and I know they do these things, but that's all I know. <laughs> oh God, funny. So I wanted to come on because I, I, I also realized that people are really nervous about this. And I just want you to know that this is, it's going to be okay. This may not be over today. Um, the week between now and inauguration, I mean, the, the, the moment between now and inauguration, Mars in Taurus is moving. It just moved into Taurus today and it's gradually moving closer and closer to Uranus. At the same time, Uranus is going to station, meaning that it's standing still in the sky, and then change direction. Once it changes direction, then Mars catches up with it and it makes a conjunction. And Uranus is, is going direct. So there's this huge energy, uh, uh, Uranian energy to transform and change and break away. It's as if all the like stodgy things that no longer served us or or, or the structures that have, have, have held us down instead of helped us to rise. Um, that, you know, they're tumbling down and now Uranus is just going to you know, uh, sort of blow a lot of things away. And I don't know, I, I'm, I don't, I feel like this is energetic. I don't feel that like this is, there's going to be a bomb, but there's definitely going to be a surge in energy. And I think we have to be ready for that. And I think the next two weeks are going to be important for us to tune ourselves, sort of tune ourselves in so that when this surge of energy moves through us, it doesn't make us sick or it doesn't disorient us too much. Because, you know, like any new thing, it usually hurts when you first, like the first day at the gym, it hurts, right? The next day, the next day after that, even worse, right? Uh, so it, take, it takes some time, but uh, we are... Um, we are raising to a whole new level and a lot of the old problems are going to go away simply because we're thinking in a different way and they're not problems. They, it, the thinking becomes part of the solution. This is a time, this is going to be a great surge of humanitarianism and it has to sort of, Things have to come down before that's going to move through. And I think that this was the beginning of the surge of energy. So I think that the energy has gone as far as it can go. Anything that's still standing, uh, which will include probably the vote, right, um, is true. And then everything, all the other stuff that got exposed that maybe we either didn't know about or people weren't looking or it wasn't a priority. Um, you know, that's going to come out. And people are going to want politicians who are taking care of them. We have to get money out of politics, though. I don't want to make this political, although this might have actually, this might already be political. I, I don't know. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm a little giggly tonight. I, I needed a little, um, full disclosure. I did need a little, um, stress relief, um, after the siege of the white house. And, uh, I mean, I, ha I had a glass of wine with dinner. That's, 
<laughs> that's what I did. So that's what I mean by, you know, that's about as far as it goes from me. Um, but because of that, I'm a little um, <laughs> giggly. So I apologize for my giggling. Um, because this is serious, this is a serious matter. And I can't stop laughing. Although I did have a girlfriend um, who used to laugh at funerals. No, wait. Laugh at funerals and cry at births, I think. Yeah, I think that. Or, yeah, something that's supposed to be happy, she would cry at. And when it was really sad, she would laugh. She always, like, did the opposite. My friend Nancy. Hi, Nancy. I doubt if you'll watch this, but. She likes Trump, so I doubt she'll watch me. <laughs> I should send it anyway. Hi, Nancy. Um, yeah, but this is, um, I think I might send this to Nancy. Hopefully she'll take it in good, in, in a good, in a good way. <laughs> uh, one of the saddest things I think has been how, you know, we've lost some, some, friends we've lost some friends and we've lost we've lost liking some of our our family members i don't think we ever stop loving them but we see them in a way that we had never seen them before you know and it kind of opens our eyes and i've had that like experience with my family because there are people who really like trump um in my family and even knowing that, I said, okay, I know that about them. How do I really feel about them? And for the most part, not everybody, but for the most part, um, I felt love for them. So I, for me, it hasn't really gotten in the way of my uh, family connections. Although I have to say, you know, those people who are... Trump supporters in my family. It's not like I talk to them. You know, I could go a whole year without talking to them unless there's a family function and we have a get together. I wouldn't see them. Um, but I still like, I still felt love for them. So it never became a thing where it became a thing was with my friends. Um, when I found out that somebody, you know, so, or somebody I liked, like more of like a like thing. Um, and they, you know, they, I don't know, it was just like, and then I would like, in one case, I said something. Uh, I said, you know, that's really hurtful. I, I want you to know that's very painful for me um, when I see that, you know. And um, in a, in a, and instead of saying, you know, anything like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Uh, but, you know, this is what I think. It's my it's my Facebook. I can put what I want up, right? So of course that's true. Um, but at least to like acknowledge my feelings, right? But it was just like, uh, well, this is the proof of it or whatever it was. It was like something like totally like not connected to the heart, which I found um, sad. I found it sad mostly. And a lot of times when I think about the people that I know who support Trump in my family or, you know, friends, they have a lot of fear. They have a lot of fear. And uh, fear kind of strengthens his energy. You know, fear strengthens Trump's energy. Love, um, love repels it. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. Um, and so we need to really be loving to one another. We really need to be loving to Trump. Um, I know that that sounds really, uh, I don't want to get it, you know, well, you can say what you want about it. <laughs> That's your right, right? I don't have to publish it, but you can say it. Um, Uh, he's, you know, he's here. He is archetypically, if we look at it from an energetic perspective, he's archetypically the fool. He's archetypically the, um, you know, the, 
the fool really the trickster right the trickster that's another energy he has that's gemini sun and gemini uranus and gemini north node and gemini he came in to be the trickster he's kind of like it's interesting because in astrology there's a, a planet called eris and she's she's this feminine energy like a rage and uh I don't know. I just got a thought that like she's she's something and I have to look at where Trump has his arrows in his chart because I think there's something about that getting activated. But um, anyway, no astrology. Let's not talk astrology. Oh, I did some cards. So um, let's see. What question do I want to ask? Let's ask... Um, hmm. I'm really bad at asking questions. Sometimes I'm just better at throwing cards because then I'm like, is that the right question? Is it the right? I'm too like analytical to come up with good questions. Sometimes it's better if I just pull cards. Um, <laughs> what's uh, what's America going to look like um, between now and? Um, Inauguration. What is America going to look like between now and inauguration? Wow, that's an interesting question. See, I thought about it. <laughs> I like that. We'll see. Uh, hopefully it's good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm willing to look. I'm willing to look. What's it going to be like? You know, because while we, have a, we do have a lot of control over how we allow things to affect us, and how we allow ourselves to react to things. Just just the realization that you're reacting to something, I, I think, is, is a good realization. Um, okay. This is Aquarius. This is hope. You know, wouldn't it just be amazing... You know, we have Uranus in Taurus and, you know, making a conjunction to Mars in Taurus and Uranus being like this explosive energy. Um, Taurus is ruled by the by um, Venus, right? And so it's feminine. It's a feminine sign. And Uranus and Taurus is the rising of the energy of the feminine. Love, compassion, care. You know, that's what's rising up. That's what's rising up. And that's this. It's our, it's our higher nature. It's our ability to, you know, love people and allow them to be who they are. Um, in a way, you know. Um, the, an acceptance that no matter where you're from, if you're willing to work, you can succeed. That's like, that's like a promise, right? Of America. It's, it's what a lot of people come to America for, from often in desperation. My, my grandfathers came from Italy. I think it was in the 1910s. Um, you know, and they came because Italy was so dirt poor. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it was beautiful then too, but it's not the Italy now. It was really poor. So, you know, people come to Mother America in a way. And I think that we could really have the kind of this is, this is my hope. This is the card of hope that we can allow the feminine, earthly, indigenous, peace, harmony, forgiveness, forgiveness for the Africans, forgiveness for what we've done to the Mexicans, forgiveness, and just have it like be this like forgiveness wave, you know, wouldn't that be beautiful? Just letting go of all of that and that we can do. 
we have to remember also that uh, Neptune in the sky right now is opposite Vesta and Virgo. Vesta is what we devote ourselves to. Virgo is health and well-being and taking care of people and stuff. Um, you know, the COVID vaccine, the doctors and the nurses and everybody's taking care of other people by doing their jobs or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, I think that um, there's a new, there's a whole new wave coming. Now this is the crossing card. This is the justice card. Now this reading is switching a little bit. This feels like um, I think there's a there's an effort not to uh, there's a legal effort not to allow the feminine to rise, and I think that this is Roe versus Wade and, and issues like that and what the states are doing to uh, Planned Parenthood. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, and and so this is supposed to be a two week reading. <laughs> But, you know, the energy is here, right? The, the energy of this, of blocking women's rights to their own bodies. Uh, you know, the last gasp of the patriarchy, for goodness sakes. Or one of the last gasps. Uh, you know, men, the men are covetous of women's abilities to generate. And we're the manifestors. We manifest life, for goodness sakes, right? But, um, and so it's, it's, I, I feel like sometimes the masculine holds the feminine down, uh, out of fear, um, of being like devoured, but I think it's more about being loved because love is merging. And the opposite of that is separation and wanting to separate yourself. But then there's the merging. And there has to be a balance of that. The North Node right now is in, in Gemini. So there needs to be a balance of that energy. I almost, you know, this is what it feels like to me. It feels like the energy is in order for us to get through this period, it's like a sheet of energy that has to sort of coalesce on two ends to sort of create almost like if you opened a drape and then you'd see that you could get through that there's, you know, there's a doorway as opposed to a wall or a window or something. So that energy. So this is a time when things are like this for the reason for us to let go of whatever mental structure that blocks us from love. That's what this is. What's at the root? Okay, so this is many problems, people feeling burdened, lots of ideas. There's lots of ideas, but maybe too many ideas to bear, too much to bear, too much of a burden to bear. Yeah, this, this is... This is going to, this I feel like is, um, is starting a, um, what do you call this, domino effect? There's like a domino effect of people's like beliefs getting shook. It's almost like these are all the beliefs that we have, but the beliefs sometimes get in the way of our vision. You know, this guy's got all these belief is, is fire, right? So you have all these, 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 um, stars. And so he has all the beliefs, but it blocks his vision and it makes his journey, um, makes his, makes his journey a, a difficult one, a burden. So, What I feel like is going to happen is, is that it's time to release those 
and in releasing those we'll see clearly okay and I think a lot of people who I think this is going to affect people who were staunch Trump voters um, to perhaps n not being part of that anymore like letting it go and saying no this is the past this is us in quarantine that's what this is you know or in home you know we have to stay home see what's in the sky we have the queen of cups so what's in the sky is the goddess <laughs> the queen of cups is uh, sensitive psychic empathic compassionate sort of always like half here and half in a, in a dream state she's the dreamer she's associated with the sign of cancer and she's also associated with the sign of Scorpio in the Kabbalah but she's the feminine and she's the feminine water so it's about healing healing of the feminine healing through the feminine and crying many tears this is many tears need to be cried what is that I think there's a poem about tears are the wash wash the face of the soul or something like that so there's a lot of opportunity for healing but there's going to be a lot of tears but that comes along with healing I've been a healer for over 30 years believe me people cried all the time and it had nothing to do uh, it's not like that sounds terrible so I was a chiropractor that I didn't adjust them and then they'd cry well sometimes that would happen but not because it hurt but because they would have an emotional release. It's very powerful. Yeah, chiropractic is, I don't talk about it hardly at all, but let me tell you, it's magic. It is really magic when you, when you do an adjustment and you, you just know it's like, you know it's, it's putting something back that needed to be put back or that it, that it was a break in the pain cycle, you know, and then they would feel great. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, the immediate future. Guys, let me tell you, this is the best, 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 best card to get, I think. This is an overflowing of love, compassion, overflowing this could also be oh god help us flood a giant snowstorm a lot of water doing something so there's that it could be that as well but you know our moods affect the weather I know what you're thinking the weather affects your moods no no it's our collective emotional whatever body that creates the weather when you know w when people are feeling desperate and desperately trapped right you 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 could imagine that people would manifest a tornado that would just like blow everything up right and then they're free of of the constraint they felt and then, of course, there's geographical stuff, too. There's that as well. But, um, you know, the energy flows. So things are the way they are because it's everything's the energy is flowing all over the planet. It's just flowing through the, the way that the land develops, you know. All right. So this is beautiful news. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting that. That's really neat. Hold on a second. So I know I've been talking quite a while now. Oh my goodness, I can't even. Oh, almost a half hour. I just want to pull a, an oracle card. Hopefully I can find the book. Where the hell did, did I do with that? 
goodness gracious. Oh, I think I know where it is. Um, yeah, I want to pick one of these oracle cards for the time between now and um, the inauguration. I'll see how many want to come out. One or two. I usually don't pick more than one or two with this deck. It's that powerful. This is this deck here, the Shaman Mystical Shaman Oracle. This is a really, really good deck as far as Oracle cards go. A lot of Oracle cards are very formulaic. Um, and they're helpful because they can, they can, what do you call your intuition? They can like spark it. But, uh, no, this is, this is, um, not like that at all. This is profound stuff. All right. Oops. I can't even, can't even get it off the deck. Oh, here we go. Earth. <laughs> oh, shoot. Earth. Okay, let me see. One second, guys. I have to find the book. Because I don't know these cards. Well, I'll just uh, I'll wing it, yeah, if I can't find the book. It might still pop up. You know, I'll remember where I, where I put it. Um, this is Mother Earth. This is Mother Earth. We, we may have a situation, <laughs> we may have a situation that trumps Trump, which I hate saying, but I love, I love saying, but hated saying, because I had to say his name twice. Um, mother, mother, mother earth, right? Mother earth. I mean, it would, it would be cool if it was just like, you know, there was like a little earthquake or crack in the earth and he fell in or something like that. That would be nice and local, but it might be bigger than that. Um, and she upstages him. She upstages him. That would be, maybe it would just be some spectacular, beautiful, physical manifestation, like in the sky or something, a cool cloud or a message. That'd be great too. That'd be great too. This is a powerful card. Can you feel that? Look into her eyes. Her third eye there glowing. Beautiful card. You know, just the way we can, we influence weather um, our attention, what we're focusing on will influence our lives. So, and that's true where your attention is. That's where your life is, right? That's why living in the past is so, is so dangerous because you never, you never really get to to be in that sort of I am power place here, you know, we create in the present moment. But there's this sort of energy of let's, um, I don't want to, I want to say let's just love one another. It's, it's deeper than that. Let's just, um, I think let's just be, you know, let, 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 let's just be, take the breath, 
Listen to the sounds if you're out in nature. The birds or the whatever, you know, whatever sounds or maybe an animal in your life, you know, your dog or something. Something that brings that feeling of like, <sighs> that's what's available to us. Isn't that amazing? We just need to ask for it. We need to ask for it and focus on it. This third eye chakra is to perceive and to command. We command our life through what we see, a vision, right? And not just the vision of like what we see with our eyes, but what we see in our mind's eye. So I think really what I'm saying is that we, ultimately we have control of it because it's where our attention is. And so let's put our attention on healing whether it's healing relationships of people that you've fallen out from for whatever reason, maybe it's time to just do that. Just like, Hey, you know, what, uh, why were we mad all those years? You know, I remember one time I had a boyfriend, God, I hope he doesn't see this. And, uh, he, he was sort of cheating on me. And, uh, that's why, we broke up, so I, I didn't take that too well. And I and I was really mad at him um, for a long time, to the point of like, you know, just look, thinking of him, and it wasn't a good place. You know, it was in my head; it wasn't a good place. And some for some reason, I can't remember why, he like knocked on my door one day. It had been like, I don't know, seven years or something like that. He knocked on my door one day and I opened the door and I, and I, I exclaimed, I won't say his name, then I'll know in case he's listening. He, he might listen, but I don't think he knows I have a channel. <laughs> um, oh, so I was like his name. Right. And all of a sudden this like, like little like pop of love like came flooding out of my heart and I was happy to see him. I hugged him. It was so nice. It was just really, really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember if that might have been even before I met my husband. But I can't remember too long ago. Anyway. Um, yeah, but it's funny because like, I, I don't know, you think you think something for so long and then when you in the situation you're like oh no i feel different i feel you know i feel love that was real that was really nice it was one of my best breakups i guess in a sort of strange way yeah that was funny anyway i i didn't have that many breakups but you know i had a number um yeah so the earth that's enough biography <laughs> I went off on that one, but I thought it was instructive. I tell you these stories not to bore you, uh, maybe to entertain you a little because they're usually humorous because it's my life. Um, <laughs> you gotta, you know, my mom always, you know, one of the things Angie taught me, Angie, who I take care of, who's still with me at a hundred. Uh, she says, if you're not laughing, you're crying. So you might as well laugh. I laugh a lot, <laughs> but I cry a lot too, but nobody sees that. And that's, that's fine. <laughs> I don't need to anybody to see that. I don't need anybody to see that. <laughs> uh, well guys, I hope this little, uh, oh, almost 40 minute video. I got to keep going. No, um, was a little bit, uh, in, informative and I don't know, instructive. I don't know. My instructing, I don't know. Uh, inspiring. Maybe I like that better. Um, for you, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. You focus on what you want to see in the world, focus on healing, 
whatever the issue is you have to heal is it unworthiness is it anger is it is it just what haven't you let go of let it go let it go and there'll be i think as that energy comes in and moves in there'll be much less rubble because we've already shed and you you become like the light and so you're not the light's not battering you like it like what if you were in more density okay and and, and the video continues <laughs> so sorry love you guys mm, much love much love take care